Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ajawi TV where we discuss architectural and construction related topics. I'm your host, I'm Ajawi. Yes, I'm Ajawi. Alright, so today we'll be talking about um, a topic that I think is very important and it's actually a preventative um, measure that you can take uh, when you're doing construction and even remedy after construction. Alright, so it's about um, the health of your building or your concrete slab. Alright, so without any further ado, let's get into this video. Alright guys, so we'll be talking about concrete spalling, right? What it is and how you can actually address the issue um, once you identify them around your home, right? So we're looking at a building here. I went and did an inspection for this particular building and um, I realized that there's a lot of spalling happening as it relates to the, the concrete that is present um, within the building, right? So you may ask what is the spalling this is what i'm talking about right here this is actually concrete spalling and you can see it in multiple areas around the structure right so the spalling is actually when the concrete actually start to separate from the steel within the slab right so uh there are multiple what you say reasons why this may happen there are measures that you can take to actually stop it from continuing but why did it happen in the first place right um, what happens is that during construction there more likely wasn't enough um, covering for the concrete right um, as it relates to the steel work so this is your, your slab here and the steel is inside inside of it right so you're supposed to have at least a half inch cover for the steel um, from the bottom of the slab to the steel and from the top so there's in some cases um, depends on where it is so if there's a support here then you'll have a over support bar at this position right and that is supposed to also have a half inch cover minimum half inch cover right and what will happen is is that this cover is actually preventing the steel from being exposed to the element so if you leave steel out in water exposed to water and oxygen over a period of time then it will start start to rust right so that's what happened why it starts falling so if you look closely at the steel bar themselves you realize that they start to rust right, let me go to another location All right so if you look closely you realize that the steel members actually start to rust and that is causing the separation from the concrete because there isn't enough cover happening right um another reason is that the concrete mix is poor right it's a poor concrete mix so it is very porous so what you can do as it relates to when you're pouring the concrete as in you're actually pouring the concrete on the slab or in the formwork to set the slab um, what you do is ensure that you your cover right so you normally put like a spacer on the bottom of the formwork to lift the steel off of the base of the formwork right and also what you can do when you're actually pouring the concrete and the concrete is going in right you vibrate the concrete so that it makes its way properly ar um, around the steel bar and, and provide that cover right for the steel um another issue is where the concrete is actually poor and very porous because there isn't enough bonding taking place what will happen is that water now starts to 
enter the concrete from the, from the top and then the steel is being exposed to that, that water. Now, in this particular case, it was actually a situation where the slab is very porous, right? So it is a poor concrete mix. So water is actually coming through this, this concrete slab. So how would you fix such a situation, right? How you fix such a situation? What you can do is, or what I would recommend for you to do is wash, wash the top of the slab. So pressure wash the slab, right? Pressure wash the slab to remove all impurities from off the top of the slab, right? So get a pressure washer um, and wash it. Right. Um, once you wash it, ensure that all the, the dirt has been removed from the top. Ensure all the mold and mildew, all of that is removed from it. Right. Then what you're gonna do is get silicone. Right. You can use silicone or you can use roof sealing compound. Right. The roof sealing compound comes in multiple colors, and it, it is applied like you are painting. Right. So the, the silicone is more expensive while the roof sealing compound is is a lot cheaper once you have applied the silicone right once you have applied the silicone to the slab um it will pretty much create a thick layer over the slab which prevents water from actually going into the slab and further rusting the steel that is inside of it and what happens is that once water goes into that slab over a period of time it will start rusting the steel and then the steel is expanding and actually causing that um, spalling to happen in, in some cases right another another reason for this to happen is where there is excessive water within the concrete itself so when you're doing construction it's not a good idea to have too much water um, in the mix, right? It's not a good idea to have too much water in the mix. So uh, I always hear people saying, you know, when once they're doing construction, you know, make it make it more soupy. Eh? No, that's not a good thing to do when it comes on to concrete, right? Um, if you have too much too much um, coarse aggregate in the slab, in comparison to the fine aggregate, then that will also happen. All right those areas where the, con the, the large easy, large aggregates are, the pines will go in and fill those voids within the slab, within the concrete, right? And that will give you a nice proper um, concrete mix. And it also um, expand the life of the concrete. So that's very important to keep in mind whenever you're doing construction. Now another way, another way um, to fix this is to actually, you know, demolish that, uh, or demolish the slab and then do over the slab. <laughs> so, uh, which is the more expensive option, right? Which is more more expensive option. But uh, if it is that you have a slab, you know, if you have the slab and you know that you're going to build on top of it going up, then you know the the more temporary option, which is the, the roof ceiling compound, is, is, is preferred because you know it's not as permanent as the silicone, all right? Not as permanent as the silicone. So that's pretty much it for that. Um, I hope that you guys gather some information or garnered some information from this. Remember, one, ensure that you ensure that you allow for proper covering of the of the rebars within the slab so ensure that there is space at least minimum half inch cover for the steel bar right ensure that you have a decent mix um, as it relates to your concrete so you don't want too much fines uh, in comparison to your course and you don't want too much course in comparison to your fine concrete so that proper bonding can occur right um a bonus bonus for this is if you're living close to the 
ocean um, to the beach then ensure that you pay attention to your slap um, because if you have um, the steel within your structure being exposed to that salt air that is going to cause your structure to rust even faster so pay attention to that um, when after construction after construction what you should do is look when rain is falling look to see if if water is actually penetrating the slab that is the, the, the perfect time to catch it when it's when when it's just after construction so that you can take the necessary steps so if, if after construction you notice that rain is falling go and look at the slab look to see if the slab is sweating look to see if water is coming through right if water is coming through that is at the, that is the point at which you want to catch that so that you can now do the necessary thing so you go rent a pressure washer you don't have to buy it just go one of them two rental places rent a pressure washer wash the slab properly um get some roof ceiling compound you can do it yourself get some roof ceiling compound apply it to the area apply it to the entire slab so that water is not penetrating that slab and sitting in there and will uh, and subsequently cause the slab or the steel within the slab to start rusting and which will then cause spalling spalling leads to building failure guys so if you have a slab and it's spalling over a period of time it will lead to failure within the structure and you know you know what happens when a building fails somebody normally lose their lives right so for this episode um i want you to hit the like hit the subscribe hit the notification bell so that you are notified whenever i make videos just like this one all right peace out and i'll see you next time